phase four is to take this style and maybe experiment with HMI optimization. And so HMI optimization um, means a different thing to different people. <laughs> so everybody has their own approach to uh, what those graphics should look like. There's multiple standards that exist out there and Ignition gives you the flexibility to match any of those standards. Um, so with that being said, um, you know, if I wanted to change these pumps to be more of a HMI optimized format, then I could just go and, you know, change the color schemes of that and show you, I've already built a template for what that could look like, but it's the same graphic here, um, except for my overlay, I've done it where, uh, now if it's off, instead of being red, it's uh, dark gray. If it's on, it's white. And then um, if it's in a manual mode, then it's uh, blue. But with that being said, you could have any color scheme you want. These could even be bound to tags so that your user could go in and they could choose what colors uh, make the most sense to them on a configuration page. Um, you know, or if you change your mind down the road, you can always modify them here. So um, this is showing you the same template, but with just a different color scheme. And if I wanted to go back to my screen here, I could, you know, switch this out, put in a new pump HMI optimization. Oh, whoops, I only got rid of first part. So with this, add my template. And uh, for my pump num, this is pump one. And so I could do the same thing with pump two, with pump three, pump four. Um, and I will show you on pump four, just to show you it has a different color. So with this pump four, you can see it's black now instead of red. Um, other things you can do here, um, a lot of times, you know, people like all these 3D graphics, these animations, but for a lot of HMI optimization, it can just be distracting. And so this union button can become your best friend that I can just come in here, eliminate all the detail, just make it a shape. And then with that, maybe I want to define, you know, a grayscale fill color. And so you can certainly do that as well. Come in here, defining a grayscale color. But also with this, um, HMI optimization is more than just taking out the color and taking out the detail. HMI optimization is really about adding more information onto your screen so that at a glance, an operator can, um, you know, get more information from their screen. Um, and so with that, what we're going to do here is we're going to build a template for these tanks that is going to not just get rid of the color, but instead is going to give us information in a different way. And so with that, let's go ahead and create that new template. And we'll call this template tank. And we want to get a graphic to start with here. I'm going to pull out um, a simple graphic. Let's go with, let's see, what's a good one here? We'll just go with this. So with this tank here, we're going to make it a little bigger. And also I want to make the color or the, you see there's little lines here, but they're really thin. So once again, because Ignition allows you to, you know, change properties of anything inside these SVG images, I can come down here to my stroke style and I'm gonna make these a little thicker stroke. And then we'll do the stroke on the whole image as well, around the outside. All right, so with this, we've got our tank here. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we wanna show the value of this tank. But before we were showing that by actual, you know, showing the liquid in here and showing it go up and down, um, rather than doing it that way, what we're going to do is we're going to add a sparkline chart 
inside this tank. So we can see the current value, but you can also see where that value has been over the last 10 minutes. So that's the whole idea of adding more information onto the same amount of real estate. So with this, our Sparkline chart exists um, over here on our component palette. If I go down to charts, pull out a Sparkline chart. And we will have that take up the full size of the main body of the tank. And so with this, um, what's interesting about the Sparkline chart is it allows you to find a range. And so we'll say high is 100, range low is zero, but our desired range is actually just between 75 and 25. So you can define um, your desired range there. And you'll see when you give it a desired range, it actually adds a color overlay showing you the space that you should always be operating in. And so with that, I could change what that color was here, but that shows you that I've been mostly operating within my desired range, although you know, just a minute or two ago, we actually dipped a little low. Um, and so you know, if I was just showing you know, that liquid going up and down, I wouldn't be able to tell that um, just by looking at my tank. So with this, um, the other thing I'm gonna do this template is once again, add a uh, custom parameter here. So this is going to be tank num, say okay. And then also with this, um, I want to bind the values of that sparkline chart to actually show whatever tank I'm using. And so with that, I come down to my properties. I have my data, I'm gonna bind, but rather than just binding to a tag, we actually are gonna bind to tag history now. And so I'm going to grab my tank one here and say, that is my selected tag. Um, but with this, I don't always want, want to be looking at tank one, just like I didn't always want to be looking at pump one. You want to use some indirection here. And so I can do the same thing where I add a variable using these uh, curly braces. And then I can bind that to my tank num property. And so now this is all uh, in direction here. And uh, with that, we're going to um, have our time range just be the last 10 minutes worth of data. And uh, I could set a poll rate that, you know, I just want this to um, grab the latest data every five seconds, 30 seconds, whatever makes sense. But with this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And uh, you see it's not there yet because I haven't given um, a tank num property yet, but if I give it a one, for example, I can see the values coming in from tank one. So with that, our tank template is now complete. And so with that, let's go ahead and go back to our screen here and we can replace some of these tanks that we have here with our new tanks. And so you've got tank one and then duplicate that, get tank two. Oops, that's a three. And you know, I could add the same thing down here, but um, with this, we're starting to build out our screen. I can, you know, go in and start muting other colors um, adding the same kind of statuses to our valves, all these things. And once I build that all out, um, once again, magically, I have pre-made that screen. And so you can see what that screen could look like. Something that I, I didn't mention here was also these moving analog indicators. So with these, um, you know, you saw before when we had um, our tanks come in here, we also have temperature and just like the fill level, well, I could see the fill level of the tanks before, but when I add something a little more interesting, I can get more value. Same idea with the temperature, rather than doing an LED display, I could show a moving analog indicator. And I can resize that to whatever I want. 
and then I just bind my temp tank one temperature to that. And it's actually showing me not just where the value of the temperature is, but it's showing me where that value is with regard to my expected value. And so I can come in here and set, um, you know, different set points where I should be in an alarm state where my desired high and low are. And then that arrow will always show um, related to where my value should be. But with this, you know, I could pull this over here. Of course, with these properties, you can uh, change values, but you can also change how they render. And so you'll notice um, my little indicator arrow here is on the left-hand side. If I want it to be on the right-hand side for this tank too, um, there's a property for that as well to reverse indicator. So um, once again, when you've done all this, um, you know, muted all your graphics, use these new techniques, you could have a screen that looks more like this. Now with this, we've done HMI optimization. And, uh, you know, once again, you can follow your own uh, version of high performance graphics. Ignition is very flexible, lets you follow any standard that's out there. 